Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This is the review slash afterthoughts video of the Attic Spinner by Unquiet Hands. If you guys have not watched my initial impressions and unboxing video, make sure you go check it out. I put a little link up here. I think it should be here like to go watch that video because you know it'll give you a lot of context okay yeah so just go watch it anyway tom has released more information about the attic spinner drop information pricing information so i'm going to share all of that with you guys first before we move on to the rest of the video so here we go the attic spinner will be offered in titanium copper and stainless steel for the first drop I don't know if there's going to be exotic metals in the future but we all know unquiet hands the probability of exotic metals being dropped in the future is very very high right so titanium copper and stainless steel for this run at least now they're going to be offered in different finishes for each material and each finish will be of a slightly different price so you guys got to bear with me while i go through all of this with you guys let's start off with titanium the titanium version is going to be offered in fine stone washed polished stone wash and bead blasted finishes now the fine stone wash titanium version is going to be retailing at 90 dollars same as the bead blasted version but the polished stone wash version is going to be at 95 so it's just five more dollars for a beautiful polished stone wash finish moving on to copper copper is offered in two finishes fine stone wash and mirror polished so they're both going for 80 usd now on to stainless steel this material over here is going to be offered in three finishes fine stone washed finish mirror polished and bead blasted so mirror polished obviously is not this this is the fine stone washed version and all of these finishes on the stainless steel version are going to be offered at 75 usd so stainless steel is going to be your cheapest version 75 usd for either of the three finishing options copper is going to be at 80 bucks for either of the two finishing options and titanium will be 90 dollars for be blasted or fine stone washed and 95 for polished stone wash and well the reason why tom took so long to release information about this drop is because he was busy trying to finish every single piece he has on hand so that's really really crazy that's wonderful dedication good job tom good job also i don't know if you guys caught it but i want to give a shout out to the weekly spin the previous episode well basically for now it's a previous episode i don't know when you guys are watching this video but there is one episode of the weekly spin where tom lynette of unquiet hands was featured as a special guest on the show and it was a really really fun watch i think all of us just got smitten by tom and his wife i think they're a wonderful couple great people out there so once again shout outs to you tom and your wife anna over at unquiet hands especially for the fact that you sent me this and kept me very happy for the past one and a half to two weeks that i had this on me every single day okay now something special that i want to share with you guys before we jump into the detailed part of the review i'm undoing the buttons because bam i'm bringing an atrium in and i just wanted to point this out because someone also shared this on the facebook groups but take a look at this it's almost like as if I know it's a little bit different in size, but it's almost like as if the attic was the inverse design of the atrium. You know what I mean? Like as if this was the mold that created the atrium or basically the negative space up here. That's so cool. That is so cool. It really looks like the opposite side or the inverted version of the atrium, which is really, really cool. Now these buttons, I did not mention it verbally, but I wrote it on screen. These buttons are called the echo buttons and we have here the super collider buttons which are these and they're also by unquiet hands and they also kind of look like this right like it's like this is the inverse design of the super collider buttons and i'm i'm so surprised because these buttons i really really like these buttons they have this little donut thing going on in the middle so now i'm talking about it let's just get into the review okay i'm gonna put the atrium and the super collider aside and pop the buttons of the attic back on now i'm gonna start off this review by talking about the overall design and ergos and my experience with the ergos is really really good but look at the design itself it's a very interesting design because it looks like a very standard basic silhouette but once you look at all the curves and all that, this is this is awesome. Like so, there's a curve out here, like I mentioned, on the outside of the arms, right? And the arms itself are kind of curving inwards as well. So it's not really like a an entire dish kind of thing going on. Yes, it is dishing on the inside, like concaving inwards. Yeah, concaving inwards. And then there's a little concave on its own out here as well. And it's very very subtly done, but it offers so much of a tactile feedback that it's just. It's just amazing. Now, I'm no designer, but I was thinking, okay, just let me think about these kind of things, all right? So I was thinking if I was given this kind of silhouette or this outline, what kind of details would I do here? I wouldn't even think of having this dual 
curving thing. Like it doesn't even need like any detailing on top. You know what I mean? Like for example, in contrast, the atrium actually has like trit slots. I mean, this is the one with the trit slots. There is a slotless version, but you could see that there is some huge dips over here and then the flats out here, right? But these flats are actually angling outwards or downwards like that. So yeah, I mean, given this kind of silhouette, I don't know what kind of design or what kind of a detail I'll put on it, but definitely this detailing out here is something that I would never even think of. And well, to be honest with you, I don't think there's any other spinners in the market that has this kind of, I guess this kind of curving done to it this inverse curving like the whole thing feels so concaved it's it's really awesome moving on to the sides the side profile i'm also very glad that it's angled sloping outwards a little bit from this dip over here the hip the one thing that i wish was maybe this could have been a bit more exaggerated kind of like the atrium over here but this one right now uh doesn't really hug your finger well it pushes your finger a little bit further away from the core of the spinner but it serves its purpose where it's easy for you to get a tactile feedback to place your finger in the middle and just perform pulls so that's part of the ergonomic experience now the next thing i'm going to talk about is the buttons the buttons themselves are really really wonderful buttons and i am so glad that these are actually paired up together these work together very very well because this actually works as a very nice worry stone as well this part over here this donut thing going on it's really Really, really comfortable i gotta say it really feels like a soft sponge pad you know kind of like those kind of things where you put on your feet for bunions or blisters you know that kind of thing i know it feels like a lifesaver candy you know like one of those lifesaver rounded kind of yeah i know you guys know what i mean okay i'm just not able to articulate myself very well in this particular aspect on the outside the outer lip it's actually curving inwards so you do have that dishing or that concaving but then you have a little donut in the middle and that feels actually very comfortable because i actually feel the donut area here on the tip of my thumb but as i'm doing that i'm getting this ridge here somewhere in the middle of my thumb so it's 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 just super comfortable and the same thing has to be said for my index finger as well of course so i could put my index finger like all the way across and i would feel the entire donut and the two ridges and that's just for some reason it feels very soothing it feels very, very comfortable, right? So that is the ergonomics of this. Now, overall feel. Overall feel is interesting because you actually feel all these raised edges because of that, that dishing going on, all that concaving. It's kind of strange because I've experienced so many spinners, right? But this is the only spinner that I feel like once I reach my middle finger out to perform a preloaded flick, I don't actually feel the entire side or a flat area. You know, I don't really feel much of that real estate. What I feel instead is something that tells me, oh, this is a big fat lip. And it's really strange because it doesn't look anything like a lip. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just curved and rounded, but when you don't look at it and you don't think about it and you start fidgeting, you only feel that edge. You don't even feel the inside here because it's so gentle and well, maybe it's the curve of my fingers. I'm not so sure, but I just feel kind of like that. So that's really, really, I think to me, the unique selling point of, I guess the tactile feedback, the way it feels you know, of this spinner. This is what the Attic has to offer that sets it apart from every other spinner that I have experienced so far in my journey of spinners. And I gotta say, this is very interesting because even now, we have been going two years plus strong in this spinner game. You know, the community has been growing, makers have been improving, but yet to see this kind of innovation out here in this, I don't know if it's a stroke of luck, but I gotta say that this is super unique. Now, if you are someone who really, really wants to be able to feel the entire spinner frame when you have your finger out here getting ready for a pull, then this, attic here would not satisfy you but i'm gonna tell you that it is something that you have to experience i cannot put this in words because this is just so strange granted yes you could stretch your finger further out and then rest on the side here of the spinner but when you do that you'll realize that you really don't feel anything beyond that that edge and <laughs> I, I mean i i don't know you you'll just feel real estate either as the lip or on the side, you won't even feel the real estate here, which is something that I did not expect and I didn't even realize. I only noticed really when I wasn't looking at the spinner while I was fidgeting with it. So that is the overall feel. Okay, the overall feel and the design of the spinner. Now, the ergonomics-wise, it's very comfortable to hold in hand. It feels a little bit wider than what it looks. It feels actually pretty chunky in your hand. Like, it looks small. I mean, compare this to the atrium. I know I keep comparing it back to the atrium, but it's because I dare argue that the atrium is possibly one of the best spinners released in the past year. That's why I'm comparing it. And also because you guys already saw a size comparison of the Attic against a Stubby. I'm not going to do that in this video again. But yeah, I mean... Now, when you're fidgeting with it, it feels like a normal, I'm gonna quote, unquote, normal sized spinner, not too big, not too small. But once you have it in your hand like that, it just feels like, oh wow, this is a pretty big spinner. And that's really interesting because it really isn't that big, but it is quite chunky on the sides. And 
overall ergonomics of this is comfortable. You could use the buttons as a worry stone, you could use the outside edge as a worry stone, and it just feels comfortable when you're fidgeting with it. So, since we're talking about fidgeting, let's talk about the fidgetability. Fidgetability is pretty awesome actually. Tetris mentioned that for some reason, he felt a little bit painful when he was pulling. I think maybe because he kept on hitting his finger up here on the edge like that, and then when he pulled, he would snag himself some way, somehow, but I've not experienced that before. I've even asked him to elaborate, but he just told me that maybe it's just that his finger was hurting in the first place. It's nothing to do with the spinner, so I'm not so sure. I initially had footage of that, guys, but it was really, really badly shot, really bad lighting, so I decided not to share with you guys, but that was what Tetris shared, and I'm not gonna hold it back because it does sound negative, but I'm gonna tell you that I don't experience it. Like, you guys know, I mainly fidget with my spinners, via performing preloaded flicks and I've not experienced that at all even if I had my finger inside that notch there to give it a good pull. So pulling it out here from the edge of the arms is not a problem, okay? It's not a problem. It's actually small enough so that I could just easily reach out there and pull because some spinners are just way too long. You don't have to stretch it really, really far. But this one, nope. And you could also start your preloaded flicks from the side edge here from the notch in the middle over here and it's gonna always feel comfortable. And the same thing can be said for pulls with your fourth finger. Now pushing forwards or just forward flicks with your middle finger always somehow ends up in the middle notch. See, even when you pull it back, middle notch. I'll just randomly stop it as slow as I can and then pull it back and you guys will get what I mean. So I'll stop it and I'll pull it back and it's just right there in the notch. Try it again, stop it and pull it back and it's in the notch. Stop, pull back, notch. See, okay, I'm gonna hold it at this angle. Stop, pull back, notch. <laughs> Even though I stopped it on the outer edge like that, when I pull it back, see, it just slides into the notch. If I were to stop it here, like say for example, on this edge, on this edge here, and I pull it back, it's still gonna slip into that notch. That is, that is, that is crazy. That is just super crazy. I, I don't know how to explain this, but it just happens every single time when you're performing forward flicks, unless you don't pull your middle finger back the way I do, okay? But yeah, I mean, continuous forward flicks is the same thing. You still feel that notch right there. Maybe I should try and take some slow motion footage and show you guys. Maybe I'll do that, okay? So that you guys can kind of see it in slow motion. Alright, moving on to a different grip, the middle finger and thumb grip and fidgeting with it with my next finger. No problem at all. Stops, pulls, push forwards, everything is just great. There's nothing to complain about. No negative to this uh, in terms of fidgetability. It's really, really good. It's very fun. And of course, jib jabs, not a problem at all. The only thing that I have to say about fidgetability is that maybe Maybe some of you might wish that the hips here, the notches were a bit deeper, a bit more emphasized, more exaggerated maybe. Because for me, that's how I feel about it as well. I do wish that these were a little bit more pronounced because I feel that it would really help in terms of overall tactile feel when I'm fidgeting with it using my index finger. Like I wish there was a bigger notch so I could kind of, I guess, get my finger in the groove and then push forward with that, you know? It's just, it's just a personal preference, but it doesn't take away anything from the design because this design is a very nice design. If I had the opportunity basically to have more exaggerated, more pronounced hips, then it might change the overall look and design of the spinner. You know, it might change the ergonomics completely. I don't know. Next, I'm gonna say that this is very, very well machined and very well finished. You guys already saw. Okay, I'm gonna pop the buttons off so we can see the insides again. And you can see that the inside is all chamfered very nicely. All right, no burrs, no sharp edges, nothing. I mean, yes, granted, this has been stone washed, so all the edges are softened up already, but look at the rounding. Ah, oh, this is just super well done. So on this, no complaints at all as well. I'm just thoroughly very impressed with the Attic Spinner, the way it's made, the way it's designed, the way it feels. Now, of course, it's getting pretty solid spin times as well. I'm easily hitting five minutes on a two-handed table spin. And this is with this particular bearing that Tom included in the spinner. I did not clean the bearings out. I wouldn't say that I've broken them in, but you know, they are stainless steel bearings. Wait, let me just double check. Are they stainless steel bearings or are they hybrid bearings? They are stainless steel. Yep, they are pure stainless steel bearings. So, you know, if this is getting five minutes on a two-handed table spin with these bearings, it's gonna hit at least six, seven, eight minutes on higher grade R188 bearings for sure. 
for sure, hands down. So we've covered the design of this, we've covered the ergonomics of this, we've covered the comfort, and we've covered the fit stability. So what is my final verdict? This spinner, guys, being Unquiet Hands' second design, like I mentioned before, the Atrium and the Arcade, were technically of the same design even though they are tri and bar spinners. I would consider that as a first design by Unquiet Hands, but for this second design, this is another killer. I am really thoroughly impressed with the work that Unquiet Hands is doing right now. The first spinner was a mega hit. That is something that we all cannot deny. The first spinner was a mega hit. The second design now, I dare say is gonna be as big or maybe even more of a hit than the Atrium and the Arcade were. Plus the fact that it's paired up with the echo buttons here, this is like a full, wonderful package all in one. For $75, guys, for stainless steel version 75, you guys saw the box that it came with. You guys saw the entire unboxing experience that I shared with you. Like that kind of level for 75 bucks is totally worth it. For the size wise, for those of you who prefer the, say for example, the mini atrium, you're gonna definitely love this. But if you're looking for something a little bit bigger, I, I don't really know if you're gonna enjoy this because I, like I mentioned before, it looks really small, but it feels big and chunky in hand. So I, I can't really speak for people who really like your XL sized thick spinners, you know, cause for me, I kind of like medium sized or a little bit smaller sized spinners. You know, my taste in spinner sizes has changed. So this is just like, perfect for me is right up my alley. Granted, yes, Tom gave this to me. I'm sure you guys are all aware because I'm one of the first in the world to receive this Attic Spinner. I had a wonderful experience with this over my one and a half to two weeks of having the Attic on my EDC. I gotta say thank you once again to Tom and Unquiet Hands and I think that this is a really, really great spinner and I cannot wait to see what other spinner designs Unquiet Hands is gonna put out. And of course, definitely the NYX Natural I guess progression would be, I wonder what this would look like as a bar spinner. Cause the translation from the atrium to the arcade was a pretty good translation. You know, like I mentioned, it's difficult to translate a try into a bar instead of the other way around. Getting pretty good spins, good ergonomics, unique feel out there, something completely different from almost every other spinner out there in the market. Very nice to look at, feels great in hand, feels comfortable as a worry stone, feels chunky, and big in the hand, even though it is not that big, it won't take up too much pocket space. Pretty solid value for money. That's all I gotta say. Now, as I end this video, I know that some of you guys are just gonna wait out for exotic versions of these, and I believe that these will be super killer in exotic metals. Just think about it. Look at the way it reflects light right now. Can you imagine if this was in Mokume? What? What? Yes, I called it. It's gonna be awesome in Mokume. It's gonna be awesome in etched Damascus steel. Even though I don't do well with Mokume, and even though the climate here doesn't really work well for me in terms of Damascus steel, just think of that. Just look at this. Look at the design of the echo buttons. Look at the curves there and the reflection. Look at this curve out here and everything. Just imagine that with the crazy patterns created by Mokume, even maybe Damascus. What? I just hype myself for nothing. <laughs> Sorry guys. And that's it everyone. Thank you so much for sharing in the size of my life. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that I provided enough information to help you decide whether or not the Attic is a spinner for you. I say please go get one. That's what I would say. Totally unbiased. I really love it and this is definitely a keeper. You know, sometimes I get a spinner from a maker and I feel like, mm, I don't really know if I'll use this for very long. Even after experiencing it, I'll be, okay, well, it feels really good but it's not that fantastic. This one is a fantastic feeling one. I really dig it a lot despite how even the way Tetris felt that it hurt. I'm gonna have to clarify with him, you know, a little bit more on that. Really excited to see what else Unquiet Hands has in store for the future. And that's about it. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout everybody. And thank you once again for sharing in the size of my life. Christmas is coming. So season's greetings and happy holidays to everyone out there. And if I missed out on anything, or if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys on that. You guys know I always reply in my comments, okay? So till the next episode, everyone, Gaga Boost.